Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's video I'm going to go over the chameleon variation of the Slav defense, which is the second most popular choice after D takes C4, which is considered to be the main line. Now the chameleon variation is, well, that's at least my interpretation of the name. It's very flexible and very adaptable. Uh, so this move A6, uh, the position which you see on the board, uh, can turn out to be many different systems, many different pawn structures, and black can go for several different plans, uh, which I'm going to explain in the video. Okay, uh, if you haven't seen the introductory video to the Slav defense, please uh, watch that first so that you can uh, get an idea of what the opening is about. Uh, in that video, I've covered the basics and plans for both sides. So how do we get to the chameleon variation? White opens with pawn to d4, we have d5, the classical response by black, and white plays the queen's gambit c4. Black declines it with c6, with the Slav defense, and now we have the two moves which are almost always played, knight f3 and knight c3 by white. So knight f3, knight f6, knight c3, and this is where black chooses which variation he's going to play. e6 is the semi-Slav, d takes c4 is the mainline Slav, and today we are going to be looking at the move a6, uh, the chameleon variation. Now what is that move about? Uh, as you may have seen in the previous video, uh, in some positions, in some variations, black is going to take the c4 pawn, especially when white fianchetto, fianchettos his bishop to g2. Furthermore, even if white goes for a setup with e3, bishop to e2, or bishop taking on c4, black is now one move closer to defending his extra pawn if he has enough time to take. So in some lines, a6 is going to serve as a defender of the b5 pawn, which in turn is going to defend the extra c4 pawn. So that's one idea. The second idea is, uh, in the Slav sometimes, and in the semi-Slav always, the c8 bishop is a somewhat problematic piece. You can see already in this position, if black plays the move e6, closing down this uh, pawn triangle on the light squares, the light squared bishop is going to be hemmed in. One of the most popular maneuvers in the semi-slav defense, I'm just going to briefly show it to you so that you know what I'm talking about. So after knight c3, if black plays the semi-slav, uh, pawn to e6, pawn to e3, knight b to d7, bishop d3 takes, pawn takes, and now black plays the move b5 with tempo. The bishop goes back and black plays the move a6. a6 is a necessary move that black has to play in order to defend b5, in order to be able to play the move c5, which is a liberating break black has to play in order to develop his bishop to b7. And the chameleon variation, the move a6, serves that purpose as well, because in some lines black is going to be closing down the position uh, with e6, and then b5 is going to be a useful move, uh, because it's going to be... Uh, either chasing the bishop away or expanding and preparing the move c5 with b5 defended by a6. Okay, and it's also a waiting flexible move, so it's not committing to anything, uh, which may seem weird, it may seem weird to waste time on a move such as a6, but it does serve several purposes and it also gives black time to see what white is going to do. Therefore, the chameleon is an appropriate name because black is going to adapt to uh, to white strategy. Now, we are going to be looking at six different moves white can play, which is bad news for black because, well, you have to prepare a lot. Uh, the, I'm just going to say that the grandmaster choice is c5, the advanced system, uh, which is, I don't know if it's the best move. Uh, objectively, uh, according to the engines, the best move is g3. But the grandmasters play c5 most often. All other four moves are also playable, so you can either go c5, e3, a4, cd5, knight e5, or g3. The only move I wouldn't recommend is knight e5, uh, which I find somewhat strange. Now, uh, let's go over the main line c5 first, because that move is kind of funny. On the highest level, I think that if black plays the chameleon and white plays c5, it's highly likely that one side wants a quick draw, and you're going to see why. Uh, the main and the only response for black here is knight b to d7, you have to keep developing. Uh, and white now plays the move bishop f4. Now what is the idea? The move c5 is obviously stopping b5. That's the main goal of the move c5. So black has to change his strategy. So black is adapting. 
so his strategy, as always in the Slav and the semi-Slav, is either to play c5 or e5, since c5 cannot be played now, black wants to go e5. On the other hand, white wants to go e4, expanding in the center and breaking black's pawn chain. So both sides have ideas of their own, so black is preparing the move e5, white is simply stopping it by developing the bishop to the most natural square. But there is a downside to the move bishop f4. And the downside is, black is now able to play knight h5. It, it, it doesn't win the bishop. The bishop has several squares it can go to. If it goes to g3, yeah, sure, it's going to be captured. If it goes to e5 as well, and yeah, it's just going to, going to be taken. So the bishop either has to retreat or it has to be defended. And believe it or not, the most common continuation in this variation on move 6 is bishop d2, knight f6, bishop f4, knight h5, bishop d2, knight f6, and they agree to a draw. So that's what happens most often. And that's why I said that if uh, black plays the chameleon and white goes for the main line with c5, it's highly likely that at least one of them wants a draw. Now, if neither of them wants a draw, after the move bishop to f4, um, black should still play the move knight h5 because it's by far the best move. He can deviate later on. Now, if uh, white plays the move bishop to d2 and black doesn't want to draw, he can try g6, where this knight on, on h5 is somewhat misplaced, but it's not a bad piece at all. So e4, which can be played now immediately, is a downside of that. d takes e4, knight takes e4, knight d2 f6, challenging the knight takes takes bishop c4 and bishop g7 is a perfectly solid position for black in fact i would much rather be black in this position not because black is better but because i think it's easier to play when you have this weakness on d4 to exploit so white has a backward spawn which isn't really going to be advancing and if white manages to develop his light squared bishop soon then e6 locking in this pawn and I would, I would even like, I, I would like to trade this bishop for this knight, because all of the pawns are on light squares, and I think in this pawn structure, when, when I'm sorry, all of white's pawns are on light squares, these two pieces are traded off. D4 is weak. I think that white should be uh, in in a lot of trouble. So that's how black can avoid the draw. So if bishop D2, black should go G6. If white wants to avoid the draw, he has several ways. Uh, one of them is e3, where black can either take the bishop or just leave it on f4, uh, saying that it's not good there and that he can capture it whenever he wants to. So g6 is the most popular move. Taking is also fine. The problem with taking is that you are never really going to be playing e5. So most grandmasters simply leave the bishop on f4. Bishop d3, bishop g7, castles, castles, bishop g5, saving the bishop now. Rook e8, e4, d4, bishop e4, and once again the same problem. And for some reason, uh, strong players choose the move c5. Uh, I myself, and this is my subjective opinion, doesn't have anything to do with objective assessments of positions, I would never play c5 because I don't want to play structures with the backward spawn in which black doesn't have a single target I can I can exploit. So what's if you're looking at this position and it's the middle game, what do you do here? With white, I would really struggle to find the plan. Uh, kingside attacks aren't really happening. Uh, the knight on h5 is misplaced, but it can come back to f6. I have a hole on d5 in my position, which is a perfect outpost for the black pieces. I have a weak pawn on d4. Sometimes knight takes c5 is a tactic that works. So I don't know. I maybe c5 is a way to draw on the highest level. I just don't. I just don't like the move. Okay, uh, the other way to avoid the draw for white is the move bishop g5, uh, after which h6, bishop d2, and knight h to f6, the same position we had with repetition, but with h6 interposed for, for black, and now once again bishop f4. So a draw, if black wants it. Uh, and the last option is the move bishop e3, which locks in the e4 pawn, so obviously white is going to be moving his g pawn. Uh, so we have g6, and now g4, a fairly aggressive uh, way for white to play, which I agree with, uh, and instead of drawing, this might be a good surprise weapon to the uh, 
black player to the player with black who expects a quick draw and a peaceful game so knight knight h to f6 and now h3 bishop g7 bishop g2 castles castles h5 and this produces kind of interesting games and that's it for c5 i i really well it seems interesting this move seems interesting but when you see what it's all about and what both sides have to be playing in order to keep playing the best moves it's kind of boring now on on club level and on anything below master these games are still interesting so yeah my advice is if you want to learn the main line with c5 the main line of the chameleon slav look at games which are played by players below 2200 that would be my advice okay uh, the second most popular move is e3 uh, this is a move which says uh, in my opinion I don't really want a complicated position, I'm just going to play the most natural move, defend my pawn, stop uh, d takes c and b5 and develop my pieces. Oh, fine. Well, you're blocking in your bishop, so at some point white is going to have to play the move e4, or he's going to have to play b3, bishop b2. Both are okay. Uh, now, you could argue that a6 and e3 are both a waste of time when white plays e3, and that's probably true b5 by uh, by black now taking anyway uh, isn't really that good uh, if you take on d5 well c takes if you take on b5 a takes or c takes uh, would give black huge central control so b3 is the main move bishop g4 bishop e2 e6 castles knight b to d7 black has uh, moved his bishop outside of the pawn chain and is developing normally h3 bishop h5 bishop b2 nothing is really going on in this position it's not aggressive both sides just develop normally and wait for something to happen uh, later on knight e5 a very common maneuver using the e5 weakness black has to take on e2 takes takes uh, queen to c7, threatening to win a pawn on e5. And now this neat little tactical trick, uh, cd, cd, and rook c1, where the queen has to move to b1, I'm sorry, to b8, and now the knight can take on d7, and black is forced to recapture with the knight. And as you can see, e3 usually leads to a completely symmetrical pawn structure, where the only imbalance is that black's pawns are uh, two files farther advanced and black has a slight space advantage on the queen side. But pawn structures which are completely symmetrical like this with equal material, so dark squared bishop, knight, two rooks and the queen, on the highest level the players are basically, uh, the players have basically agreed to a draw at this point. Once again, if you want to learn the e3 system in the chameleon slav, look at games below 2200 which actually are played on from here and where players don't play perfectly but e3 is a very peaceful way to play against the chameleon okay now let's look at a more aggressive option a4 a4 is fun and a4 uh, serves a clear purpose white is saying i'm stopping b5 with two pawns and there's nothing you can do about that now, uh, the first thing that has to be explored is what if he takes, what if black takes, white plays the move e4, can b5 be played? Well, no, uh, in this case it cannot be played because knight takes, pawn takes, and rook takes, rook would win material. So a4 definitely does stop uh, the move b5. So black needs to change strategies. And since black has played this flexible move, uh, since black has played this flexible move a6, it's now easier to play both b5 and c5 in the near future, and black can change strategies. He doesn't have to go for uh, a risky bishop development. Something like bishop f5 could run into c takes d, c takes d, and queen b3. Uh, so black can play a peaceful game with e6. Okay, saying that a4 is a waste of time, I have now prepared to develop my bishop, whereas you've played the move a4. Bishop g5, pinning the knight, knight b to d7, defending. Uh, and we are going to have a look at a few more moves before we continue with knight b d7, which is the main line. After bishop g5, a very interesting option is a5, similar to the Smyslov uh, variation in the main line, where the bishop, where I'm sorry, the b8 knight is coming to b4 via a6 uh, using this weakness, whereas white's knight firstly is already developed to c3 secondly the c6 pawn is defending b5 so a5 is not as weakening for white as uh, for black as a4 is for white white plays e3 knight a6 bishop e2 bishop e7 castles castles normal moves queen b3 and now knight b4 
and why it's best option is to simply trade the knight off uh, as soon as possible so something like this and h6 once again leads to a fairly uh, peaceful position after something like bishop h4 well after bishop h4 where black is going to strive to play d takes c and after bishop takes c to play b5 at the favorable moment if it's possible if it's not possible then he wants to play the move e5 in any case one of these two have to be played so either c5 b5 or e5 to liberate the bishop otherwise black is in trouble so yeah but the move a5 i wouldn't really recommend unless you are very familiar with with these kinds of systems i think it's kind of risky same as the smyslov in the in the main line uh, and the third option black has is d takes c4 taking the pawn now and now we are going to see what happens uh when well e4 is played uh this uh trying to win the knight and this could run into something similar to the botanic if e5 is allowed then h6 and white doesn't win a piece so b5 defending the pawn and now if e5 h6 is the move uh, you can watch the video on the botanic semislav to to learn about these systems so after b5 a b5 c takes b5 and believe it or not in this position after knight takes a takes uh black is actually better and i'm going to show you why so white has to sacrifice the knight for for a pawn and then he wins the exchange but uh, black has so much play for the exchange that black is in fact winning after knight b5 a b5 rook a8 and in this position bishop b7 gaining a tempo on the rook rook a1 h6 chasing the bishop away bishop to d2 and now knight takes e4 in this position white has a pawn for the uh, white has an exchange for the pawn but he has two isolated pawns black is going to create a passed pawn on the queen side eventually black is the first one to castle in this position uh, because it's really hard for for white uh, i'm sorry white is the first one to castle in this position but it's really hard for him to defend after knight c6 castles queen d5 you can see that all of black's pieces are perfect and i would say that any single one of these three minors is better than the f1 rook so it's getting extremely extremely hard to play if i turn on the engine in this position it says that black has minus two which is kind of unbelievable so that might be a great way to win the positions after a4 and that's the move i would recommend so because i think that most players are going to greedily take the exchange so this is a trick i would recommend that you learn now it's not really a trick because if uh, dc e4 b5 a b c b uh, if he doesn't take then black is still fine it, the position is still equal and if he takes he is in trouble so let's go over that position once again so d4 d5 c4 slav knight f3 knight f6 knight c3 chameleon a4 uh, e6 bishop g5 which is the main move if they play a4 they are going to play bishop g5 uh, dc4 after dc4 the the only move that compensates for the pawn and tries to win it back is e4 and now we go b5 after b5 i would say that most players who play uh, a4 are familiar that the rook is sometimes hanging and most of them are not going to know that the exchange sacrifice is more than sound so play that a b c b knight b a b rook a8 bishop b7 and black is winning if you spend a couple of days analyzing positions from uh, from here well there's only one master game uh, in which okay there are four master games two draws two wins for black uh, you can look at all of them in all of them rook a1 has been played uh, and they are, they were played on grandmaster level one is 20 2600 the others are 2400 so very high level okay but if you don't want to do that if you want to play the main line don't take uh, dc play knight b to d7 which i once again wouldn't recommend i would recommend dc e3 queen a5 is the main move knight to d2 bishop b4 trying to win the c3 pawn queen c2 defending and now c5 and as soon as you can manage the move c5 you have to play it because that's the way to get your bishop active you can later on play something like either b6 or b5 bishop b7 and activate uh, your problem piece on c8 knight b3 attacking the queen queen c7 dc5 here the best move is to castle taking is also playable of course but you are well 
he can take on f6 and ruin your pawn structure. So castling is the main move you can win that pawn later. Bishop f6 uh, trying to, well, defend the c4 pawn indirectly. Bishop, uh, knight f6, c takes d5, knight takes d5, bishop to d3, uh, and now bishop c3, b c3, knight f6. And in this position, white is temporarily a pawn up, but that pawn is going to drop and it's perfectly equal. Uh, I don't like playing uh, the Slav or the Semislav for a draw. That's why I wouldn't recommend the move knight b to d7. Okay, instead of a4, c5 or e3, uh, the fourth option is cd5. And cd5 is what I hate facing the most. cd5 is saying... Well, I'm white, I'm a tempo up, I'm going to use my small advantage of the delayed exchange Slav, where you have played the move a6. And I think that on Grandmaster level, this is one of the main moves and one of the trickiest moves, especially if you spend a lot of time learning the chameleon, learning the plans, this sort of gets rid of all of that. So if you are white and if you are playing somebody who you know is well prepared in the opening, just take on d5 and they are going to be extremely annoyed and their knowledge will have been wasted okay but still there's a bit you have to know cd5 bishop f4 and this position is any queen's pawn position with exchanged c pawns uh, very common can happen in a ton of openings and you've probably played it a thousand times but you were unaware of that and a6 is useful okay a6 stops knight b5 Knight c6, e3. Bishop g4, bishop e2. e6, castles. Bishop d6, bishop e7 can also be played. You have to decide if you want a more equal or a more complicated position. Obviously, bishop d6 trades the pawns. Okay, so bishop takes d6, queen takes d6. This is a Karo Khan structure, which I've played a lot with uh, the exchange Karo Khan structure. So... I mean, the difference is, yeah, that the e3 pawn is in c2, but for black it's an exchange Karo Khan structure, which I'm very familiar with. So rook c1, castles, knight a4, coming into c5, you have to stop that, knight e7, a3, rook a to c8. This is so boring that I, it's, it's, it's a draw if both sides play well. You can see that it's equal material, two knights, light squared bishop, two rooks and a queen. This time pawn structure completely identical. If no mistakes are made, this is a draw. There is no way to create an imbalance. Okay, so I don't want to talk about CD5. If you want to play it as white and simplify positions, sure. If you are black uh, and you play the chameleon, be prepared for a boring game if they take CD5. My advice is uh, look at ideas from the exchange Karo Khan for black. Uh, and with the difference of the C2 pawn being on E3, which is actually an advantage in my in my opinion, because it's not easy for white to utilize the e-file pressure. Okay, uh, the move that I don't like for white at all, which I think is not a good move, is knight e5. Uh, in fact, that's the only move that allows black to equalize. The engine now thinks that the position is equal. You simply play knight bd7, and after bishop f4, well, white played knight e5 to recapture on c4, which is fine. dc, knight c, and now you get the tempo with b5. The knight has to go to e3 and you get to, play, to e5 and you get to play bishop b7. Now, this is an improved semi-slav, in my opinion, after e3, e6, because you are going to play c5, there's no stopping c5. And after bishop e2, c5, castles, cd4, ed4. Why is white playing knight e5? I have no idea. Isolated pawn. All of black's pieces are perfect. Black doesn't have a single issue in the position. They're going to share the c-file. Black's bishop is coming to e7, perfectly natural square. The queen is coming to b6. Rooks are coming to c8 and d8. I would love to play this position. In fact, you can even change plans. You don't have to play queen b6 and stuff like that. You can go knight b6, knight d5, completely blockade and play against the d4 pawn and... That's an isolated queen's pawn, which isn't really that useful. If you want to get rid of any attacking possibilities for white, just snap off the e5 knight and it's even easier to play. So knight e5, I think, is just a bad move. Don't, don't play it. And now we come to the engine best choice, uh, which, well, the engine best choice is, in my opinion, a good strategy if you understand it. If you don't, you shouldn't play it just because it's the engine best choice, which the proof is after a6, g3 has been played 300 times. 
Uh, c5 has been played 2800 times, e3 2200 times, a4 1800 times, so g3, even though it's the engine best choice, the grandmasters don't trust it. Now what's the idea? g3 of course prepares to fianchetto the bishop. Black can now play b5 immediately, or he can take on c4. Uh, after b5, white plays c5, which closes down the pawn structure, which is okay. g6, bishop g2, bishop g7, castles, castles, knight e5, a5, stopping any queenside expansion, which is okay, but I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend the trickiest continuation, just d takes c4. Since white is fianchettoing, he's not going to play bishop uh, e3 and bishop takes c4. He's going to play bishop g2, but he has to play the move a4. After a4, he's stopping b5, but now we can go e6, bishop g2, c5 trying to dissolve the pawns and there's nothing better for white to do than to take and when this exchange of queens happens uh, you play knight c6 or bishop d7 and well no problems here uh, you are going to of course take the c4 pawn white is going to eventually take the c5 pawn and it's going to be equal another move you can go for is bishop d7 instead of knight c6 and after knight e3 go bishop c6 challenging this long diagonal once again winning this pawn later on uh, where white is going to win your c4 pawn so knight c4 bishop c5 castles knight bd7 once again symmetrical pawn structure uh four on four and two on two white is free and kettle black isn't uh, bishop pair for both sides no problem for either side except maybe the a4 pawn for white is slightly overextended but that's not really a big issue and the position is equal so the engine likes it i really don't see that it's that challenging for for black okay so let's summarize the opening um, after d4 d5 c4 and the slav uh, black plays the move a6 which is flexible prepares b5 prepares defending the c4 pawn that he can take but it also allows structures with e6 it allows structures with g6 and many different positions can come out of it white has several options uh, to play against it, uh, I would recommend the move a4 for white because it's the trickiest. Uh, c5 is okay if if you want a draw or if you want to complicate stuff later on with a uh, with a kingside attack. Uh, I would definitely say that knight e5 is a move you should avoid. So as white, look at all six options, find one that suits you best. As black, learn all of them. You just have to know all of them. But if you know all of them, your games in the chameleon are going to be really fun because. As you collect experience, uh, your skill level is going to increase rapidly uh, in the system because every game is going to be different. Playing the chameleon really is different every time, as the, as the name says. Well, okay. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think about the opening. Let me know what you think about the video. And stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.